This is the city, Los Angeles, California. One crazy summer at Westwood, wouldn't you say? Yeah, if you had um, heard in late June, of course, the incident involving Sean Diddy Combs, you know, allegedly swinging a kettlebell um, at the uh, UCLA Strength and Conditioning Coach. I hope I pronounced his name right, Sal Olosi, and some interns while in the office. And this was just after a uh, strength and conditioning practice in which Olosi allegedly uh was you know yelling at Sean's son Justin, who is a defensive back for the Bruins, by saying, "I don't care if your dad is here, you know, I'm not going to treat you different than anyone else." And yelling, you know, all this to him, whether that was personal or just basically football talk, not to be taken personal. Well, apparently Sean wanted to talk to the coach after practice. Next thing you know, kettlebell swings, and Sean's arrested for assault with a deadly weapon, the, the rebel mogul. So who knows if it was self-defense or if uh, Sean agged on. Um, if you're watching this thing, by the way, in late July or August, the verdict, I'm sure, from the judge from that mid-July hearing would have already kind of given you the verdict there. So let's talk a little bit about uh, UCLA, though, as far as the uh, Bruins for the upcoming season. Of course, last year, 10 wins, beat their hated rivals from USC, and a bowl win over Kent State. But you get the feeling that the Bruins might have not hit expectations. That's because all three of their losses were at home, of all places. Okay? And losing, look, look, losing at home to Oregon, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Because Oregon went to the national championship game, so that could be excused. But losing at home to a Utah team, even though Utah actually had a pretty fair football team this past year, still at the time, UCLA was highly ranked, and you thought that you know, UCLA was going to be a better team than the performance that they had that night at the Rose Bowl. And then, last regular season game, you beat Stanford, worst team that David Shaw has had there at Palo Alto, California. You go to the Pac-12 championship game with a rematch with the Ducks. That didn't happen because Stanford beat UCLA by three touchdowns. It was UCLA's worst game of the year. It's performances like that that prevent those outside of Westwood from really taking UCLA serious as a college football playoff contender. Yeah, there's talent there. They return most of the players, but you wonder deep in the back of your mind why they're going to throw another clunker in, okay? 10-3 and is good, but last season, Jim Moore's squad knows that the road was paved right there for them to get to the Pac-12 championship game and maybe even more than that. At least entering this year, you return nearly every starter, but offensively, you don't have Brent Hundley, your most valuable player on offense from a year ago. The quarterback has moved on, so the job will either, in my opinion, go to Jerry Neuheisel. You might remember Rick Neuheisel's son. Rick, of course, played quarterback at UCLA, was a coach there as well for several years. Well, last season, Jerry Neuheisel um, was called upon in a time of need when uh, Hundley got hurt early in the season against Texas, that game at Arlington. And then Jerry led UCLA in that second half with a strong performance, including a fourth-quarter touchdown that would lead UCLA to a win. So Jerry, when called upon, can do the job, but can he do it for an entire season? But breathing down his neck is going to be Josh Rosen, maybe the number one um, high school quarterback from a year ago, a five-star recruit. So many colleges obviously wanted him, but he decided to go to Westwood. And Rosen is extremely smart. That's the one thing you keep hearing about this guy. And plus, what helps Rosen, what's, what's really a feather in his cap, is the fact that he played in an offense that's pretty similar to UCLA's. So that transition from high school to college, granted it's going to be different personnel and a higher speed and it gets better defenses, still that transition may not be as big as you might think. Plus, he has a very strong arm. So Rosen, don't be surprised if he wins that job, even though uh, Coach Moore is not supposed to announce who the starter is supposed to be from what we've heard, until August. But Rosen gives himself a sporting chance. Around him is going to be a wealth of talent. I'm talking about the running back, Paul Perkins, 1,500 yards a year ago, nine TDs, six yards a carry. Should be all uh, Pac-12, possibly even more than that. Last season, UCLA rushed for 209 yards per game. But the reason why I think UCLA's offense was, was very good was they were balanced. I mean, they threw for about 250. You can throw for about 250 a game, and you can rush for over 200. Hey, you're going to keep defenses guessing. And the receiving court looks good with Devin Fuller back at the split. And the exciting Jordan Payton, over 950 yards receiving a year ago, seven TDs. He returns. 
Most of the offensive line is back for the Bruins with Thomas Duarte at tight end. And you have a couple of uh, linemen. I mean, you have several linemen, but just to name a couple, uh, Jake Brundle at center and the left guard in Alex Redmond. UCLA will have a load of experience up front. Defense is going to return the majority of their starters, but this is where I have the concern for the Bruins. I know the patch wall is high scored prone, and I know that defenses in this league have a hard time keeping up. But imagine not having some of your most valuable players, including on defense, Eric Kendricks, who was so valuable from his linebacker spot, defensive back Anthony Jefferson, he's not there anymore, and the pass rushing specialist on the defensive line, and Owa Odigizua, he's not there anymore either. So you do return the majority of your starters, but those are some major losses for the Bruins. Thankfully, they've got some non-conference games against teams that they should be able to beat at the beginning of the year that should give them time to get acclimated as far as this new breed of chemistry for UCLA. Talking about Miles Jack, a veteran, 88 tackles a year ago, should be all packed hold this year. They're going to move him from outside the inside linebacker. He can get more tackles that way. Take advantage of your speed with D, with that Dion Hollins on the outside. Outside linebacker should have a big year. Uh, last season, nine sacks for Hollins. And then defensive tackle, and Eddie Vanderdose, and also Kenny Clark at nose tackle. If you can get a push from these guys, if you can get a defensive rush, then that will really, um, I'm not saying completely substitute, but at least uh, help your cause a little bit in losing Odigizua, who, again, I think was a big loss on the defensive line for the Bruins. Defensive backs, we mentioned that Jefferson has moved on, but you do return a wealth of talent with Fabian Moreau at one corner. You have Ishmael Adams at another. Marcus Rios, I think, will continue to get more and more playing time for the Bruins. And then Jaleel Wadud and Randall Goforth returning for UCLA. Um, last season, when UCLA lost those three games at home, how many combined sacks did they have? Three. That tells you everything you need to know about the Bruins. you got to get a rush. If you can't, then it doesn't matter how good those defensive backs are. They're going to be running all over the field, trying to cover from, you know, from sideline to sideline. Defensive line has to be big for the Bruins. Special teams last season struggled at the beginning, but did get better as the year went along as far as place kicking. Uh, the place kicker, I think, ended up making 13 of his last 14, and we'll see if the punting game can get some consistency. If you look at the schedule for UCLA, the non-conference part of it, Looks fairly manageable. Virginia does have a good defensive backfield, so that could be an early test for whoever quarterbacking UCLA will be, whether it's Newhouse or Rosen or somebody else. And But other than that, you should be able to handle the Cavaliers. Last year, you might remember UCLA's defense scored several times in a close win last year at Charlottesville, but this time you get them at the Rose Bowl. You play at UNLV, you host BYU, and then the conference schedule could start tricky. Played two of your first three on the road, including a game at defending Pac-12 South champion Arizona. Uh, you'll host um, Arizona State in their high-scoring attack, and then you go to Stanford, who humiliated the Bruins a year ago. And then the last part of the schedule I don't like for UCLA because three of the final four are on the road with Washington State, the only home game in November. The last two games of the season at Utah, who beat UCLA a year ago and a rematch with the Trojans, but this time at the Coliseum, that could decide the Pac-12 South. I think UCLA, because the amount of talent that they have returning, is going to have a nice season. They should score a lot of points. Perkins, uh, you know, I think this guy can really play. And defensively, there's some nice pieces. I just don't know what the losses, you know, of losing Kendricks, of losing Jefferson, of losing, you know, Odigizua, you know, of losing Hundley. I don't know if they are going to be capable of winning the Pac-12 South. I think 10 wins is likely, but I do think a couple of losses will await the Bruins, and I think that'll be enough to keep them out of winning the Pac-12 South. I think 10-2 and two with a 7-2 and two, uh, conference record. Remember, they only play three non-conference games through the Bruins, and I think they'll finish second in the Pac-12 South. It's a very competitive division. Hey, last year, five of the six teams in this division won at least nine games, and three of them, including UCLA, won 10. That's a tough division, probably the toughest in college football. But I think UCLA finishes runner-up in the Pac-12 South. That's my look at UCLA. Talk to you next time.